What's better than watching a video about software development? Right, learning by doing. In this video, we will implement a simple to-do list application using Blazor server. We will show a list of to-do items, add a to-do item to the list, remove a to-do item from the list, mark a to-do item as completed and mark a to-do item as uncompleted. To focus on Blazor development and to keep it as simple as possible, we're not going to use any user interface libraries. However, we'll make use of a few Bootstrap CSS classes that come with the default project template of a Blazor server application in Visual Studio 2022. If it's the first time you hear about Blazor server, I highly suggest watching the introduction to Blazor server video on my channel. A quick summary nonetheless, Blazor server doesn't use WebAssembly, instead it uses HTML and CSS like any other web technology. All user interaction code runs on the server. A Blazor server application runs on an ASP.NET Core application and client and server communicate using a persistent WebSocket connection using SignalR. I will explain what those architectural boundaries mean for Blazor server application development throughout this tutorial. We need to set up the project before we can write code. For this tutorial, we'll use the default Blazor server application template from Visual Studio. I use the latest.NET version, no authentication, configure HTTPS without Docker and use top-level statements when creating the project using the Visual Studio project creation wizard. The template comes with a few files we don't need and quickly remove. In the data folder, we remove the weather forecast and the weather forecast service files. In the pages folder, we remove the counter.razor component file and the fetch data component. In the shared folder, we remove the nav menu razor component as well as the survey prompt component. In the index.razor component file, we need to remove the previously deleted survey prompt component. The resulting index file looks like this. Next, we need to remove the deleted nav menu component from the main layout.razor component. The resulting main layout component looks like this. We also need to change the program.cs file and remove the service registration for the weather forecast service. The resulting program.cs file looks like this. If you want to skip the process of creating the project, as well as removing the unnecessary files from the project, check out the link to the GitHub repository in the video description. Head to the first comment labeled Clean up Blazor Server template. And now we're ready to implement the to do app. As the first step, we need a data class that contains the information for a to do item. We create a to-do item.cs file in the root folder of the project and implement the following class. The to-do item class contains a text property of type string and a completed property of type bool. The text property is initialized in the constructor when creating an instance of the to-do item class. The completed property isn't explicitly initialized and therefore will have the default value of the boolean type, which is false. You could also use a record type definition for this data class. However, I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. With the data class in place, we now want to implement the index razor page component, which is the default page of the Blazor server web application. First of all, we need to add a code section to the component and create a list of to-do item objects. We also override the onInitialized lifecycle method, allowing us to execute code when the component is initialized. We add two to-do items to the list. Next, we want to show the to-do items on the page. I insert the following template code that uses the built-in page title component. We also use the for each iteration statement to render all the to-do items in the to-dos property defined in the code section of the component. We use the item class method to create the CSS classes added to the div element containing the text of the to-do item. 
we need to add these methods to the code section of the component. It's a common way when using Blazor to have a conditional statement deciding what CSS classes to use. In this case, we add the item-completed class to the div in case the to-do item is completed. Otherwise, we return an empty string. Next, we open the site.css file in the CSS folder of the www root folder and add the following definition for the item-completed class. It strikes the tag through and as seen before, this class is applied when the to-do item is completed. We currently define and fill the list of to-do items in the index page component. However, in a real-world application, we most likely would store and load data from a database. Since we are working with Blazor server here, we could connect to the database directly from within the index component because all code is run server-side. However, also when using Blazor server, it's best practice to follow the separation of concern principle. Speaking of principles and best practices, if you are still following along, consider pressing the like button below this video. Next, I create an iToDo service interface and iToDo service implementation for the interface in the services folder. The iToDo service interface looks like this. It defines a void add method accepting a toDo item object as its sole parameter. We will use it later to add a to-do item to the data store. The getAll method returns an enumerable of all stored to-do items. The implementation in the to-do service.cs file is also simple. For this tutorial, we still want to store all the to-do items in memory. Therefore, we define a private field that holds all the to-do items. In the constructor, we initialize the private field containing the to-do items and fill the collection with the two to-do items previously directly added in the index.razor file. The add method takes the to-do item provided as a method argument and adds it to the list stored in our private field. The getAll method accesses the private field and returns a copy of the data using the toList method. We need to register the service in the program.cs file to make it available to the integrated dependency injection mechanism. We add the following line after the add server side blazer method call on the builder.services object within the program.cs file. We can now use the to-do service within the index component. First of all, we need to add the following directives after the add page directive at the top of the index file. The first line adds a using statement making the types within the services namespace available within the whole component. Next, we use the add inject directive to add the registered singleton implementation for the iToDo service type to the component using the underlying to-do service variable. We can now replace the initialization of the to-do's property within the code section of the component with the following implementation. We use the to-do service variable to access the injected service implementation and call the getAll method to retrieve all stored to-do items. As the next step, we want to add items to the to-do list. We create a new to-do item form razor component in the shared folder that will hold the form accepting user input. Again, we use the add using and add inject directives to make the iToDo service available within the component. The component template uses the built-in edit form component. We provide the new item property defined in the code section as the model. We also register the item added method as a callback for the onSubmit method of the edit form component. We use a few divs to style the look and feel and use the built in input text component to show an input field. We use the addBind-value attribute to bind the text property of the new item object to the input field. In the code section, we define a parameter that exposes an action named onItemAdded. 
It allows providing a callback method when using the to-do item form component. We mark it as required. The item added method is executed when the user hits the submit button of the HTML form created by the built-in edit form component. It takes the text input and creates a new to-do item instance before emptying the text of the input field. Next, we call the to-do service and add a new item using its add method. Finally, we check if an on item added callback is provided and call it if it's set. We add the implemented to-do item form component to the index page component. The following template snippet is added between the page title component and the listing of the to-do items. We provide an item added method to the on item added parameter of the to-do item form component. We need to implement that method in the code section of the index component. Whenever an item is added to the to-do service, we want to reload the data to show the new item within the to-do list. We need to call the changed method to tell Blazor that it needs to re-render the component in the browser. Who knows the feeling when you're excited about the day ahead and put as many items onto the to-do list as you can think of? Well, turns out you can only complete a few of them. That's where removing items from the list comes in handy. First, let's add a delete method to the iToDo service interface. In the index component, we add a delete item method that has a single parameter of type to do item that we will use in the components template. I also renamed the items added method to items changed because we can use it in multiple places. When renaming the method, make sure it is also renamed in the template where it is referenced within the on item added callback. Within the delete item method, we first use the to-do service to delete the item in the data source. On the following line, we call the items changed method to reload the data and call the state has changed method. It makes sure that we have the current state of the data source reflected on the page, including, for example, changes made by different users. Finally, we change the components template to include a delete button for each listed to-do item. We add a diff wrapping the existing content with the for each statement iterating through the to-do items. We use some CSS to align the child diffs beside each other. Next, we add a diff containing a button. We use some bootstrap CSS classes to make it look like a delete button and we register the delete item method implemented before as the callback method for the onclick property. Make sure to provide the to-do variable as the argument for the delete item method. The application now looks like this. We have a delete button beside each to-do item. When we press the button, the item is removed from the list. We can now add and remove items from the to-do list, but we also want to feel the reward when completing an item. And if we mistakenly click on the complete button, we also want to be able to undo the action. First, we will add two methods to the iToDo service interface, a complete and an incomplete method. The implementation of both methods is similar. We change the state of the completed variable of the provided to-do item. In the index component, we add the following two callback methods to the component's code section. For both methods, we use the previously defined complete or incomplete methods on the to-do service. We also call the items changed method similar to the implementation of the delete item method. Next, we add the template code between the to-do items text and the delete button. We use an if statement to output a different template depending on the state of the to-do item. We also provide the callback methods implemented above to the onclick handlers of the HTML button elements. 
At the beginning of this video, we implemented the item class method that now adds the class containing the strike through effect depending on the state of the to do item. As you can see, we can now add new items, remove items that we don't want on the list anymore, and we can complete and uncomplete to do items. If you happen to get stuck following this tutorial, or if you want to see the finished state of how I implemented this to do items application using Blazor server, head over to the project's GitHub repository linked in the video description. Feel free to clone the repository and add new features to improve and practice your Blazor development skills. To continue learning, check out my Blazor crash course linked in the video description. It's a great starting point to get you up to speed with Blazor development, from implementing your first Blazor component to handling forms, using CSS and building a simple dashboard. And if you want to learn more about .NET development, including Blazor, consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll see you in the next video.